afternoon, South Africa, and a very warm welcome to you. My name is Jeannie D, and this is Afternoon Express. We are winding you down and wrapping up a glorious week and kicking off your weekend in style. Now, today we are hanging out with actress Masasa Mbangeni. She is famously known for the character Tembeka that she used to play on Scandal, a character who was known for her conniving ways and very villainous, you know, behavior. And now we're also joined by psychologist Sharissa Bloomberg to get some insight into what it's like for a celebrity who has to deal with a lot of hate from the public for a character that she plays. And don't forget it's Friday, which means we'll be playing our Web Whiz quiz with our guest later on as well. Good afternoon, South Africa. Yes, the weekend is upon us, and so we are ready. And joining us in the loft today, we always bring in some incredible guest chefs. You're looking amazing. Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. And this kitchen is looking amazing because it's got my favorite, couple of my favorite ingredients. First of all, there's freshly cut bread there. I can smell the carbs from here. Totally. I see some new ingredients which I haven't seen before. What exactly are we going to do with all of this? So we're going to be making a basic minestrone soup. Oh, yummy. Yeah. But it's not soup. It's That's not soup. It's kind of a combination of... Everything? Yeah. yeah. So all the Italians that watch our show, all the Europeans who will know what a minestrone is, will always know. It's like, it's not a soup, it's not a pasta, it's not a stew. What is it? We'll be showing you later on how to put all of this together and get you ready for the winter season. So make sure you stay tuned to all of the details right here on Afternoon Express. Let's kickstart the show on the couch. Our guest today, Masasa Mbangeni, is probably best known to South African audiences as the villainous Tembeka Shezi, a role she played for very many years and a role that she was nominated twice for a SAFTA, finally taking the award home in 2015. Less known to most people, though, is the struggles she dealt with in her personal life and a battle with depression. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Thank you so much for having me. What a career you've had. <laughs> it's been quite interesting. Yeah. It's been exciting. I'm enjoying it. But let's go all the way to the beginning. So when did you know that you wanted to be an actress? I have this conversation with my cousin actually and apparently when I was about eight years old we were sitting at my parents' house next to the fridge for some reason she remembers it but we're next to the yeah. fridge and um, I said to her I want to be like that actress on that lady on TV. At the time I was talking about Pamela Nomveta who was playing Ziggy Lukela on Generations yeah. and so years later my cousin sent me an email going remember that time when you said you wanted to be like that lady on TV or guess what you her <laughs> and so um, I must have been about eight to nine years old when I just knew I didn't have the words or the vocab to be able to articulate what acting is what it means to me but um, my heart, my spirit just knew that that's what I wanted to do. Now, I know as well as the next person that in order to, you know, you can say that, but then to actually make it come right oh, yeah. and make your dream come true is very difficult. What were the steps that you put into place that, that I mean, how many auditions did you have to go to you know, before Jeannie, you eventually got your break? My journey has been quite a, 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 I don't know whether serendipity has got something to do with it, but it's been quite beautiful. Um, my mother introduced me to speech and drama when I was a little girl, about eight and nine. And um, I applied to study at WITS to do a BADA majoring in performance and directing. And what happens every year at WITS, I don't know if they still do it now, but um, what happens is that they invite producers, agents, showrunners to come and watch your final showcase. Yeah. And so at my final showcase, I remember I was doing a monologue from a, a coloured museum about a girl who gives birth to an egg. And I was sitting on the stage on my own with this egg <laughs> and um, a producer from Scandal was there. And they call me um, a couple of days afterwards and they're just like, uh, we'd like you to come through. So I'm thinking, oh, so they just want to show me what I'm not going to have because... Actresses um, don't get it that easy. <laughs> no, that's the narrative that we're constantly fed. But I'm hoping uh, in the conversation today that I can show people that you don't have to follow that journey if yeah. that's not what's yeah. destined for you. We all have different ways to get what we're so supposed to be. So that was your be. audition? You so didn't that was my audition. audition. I didn't go into an audition for a scandal. I was called in. I thought, okay, they're going to show me what I'm not going to have because there's no way that you're going to leave varsity in the following week you employed. And um, the following week, I was told, okay, so you're starting next week. Now, here's the catch. I, I didn't start as Tembeka, the villainous um, cow oh, yeah. that we later grew uh, into. The character was a featured extra. Yeah. And so literally I would wipe shots. So taking the camera from this main actor to that main actor. And that was an interesting part of my journey as well because here I was, I'm like, oh, I didn't audition, watch me walk into the set. And it's just like, <laughs> no, calm down, <laughs> wipe the shot. And so I probably spent two years wiping shots. And that was a beautiful 
education outside of university that I got because I'd never worked in a studio before. I'm a theatre trained actress. So I paid my dues in different ways, Thank but um, um, it was an education on the floor that I'm truly, truly, truly grateful for. What a way to cut your teeth. Yeah. yeah. And then what was the point that you became T Tandeka then? So what happened was... When you um, were there already. When I was, I was there <laughs> and I was just waiting for the opportunity. And I think if you're constantly prepared and you, you're always ready for that moment, when the opportunity comes, you just step into it. Yeah. So I had grown up watching Selo Mike Gangobe on television. And um, my character was introduced into the show um, as a love interest of, of Silo yeah. when, when finally they gave the character um, more dialogue and more action. And uh, I remember the day uh, that I was shooting with Silo, I looked at him and I was having a little moment in the corner in the studio, and he was just like in this beautiful, booming Silo voice, asked me what was wrong. I said, I grew up watching you and here my time is coming now and I'm acting opposite you. Yeah. And I stepped into that moment because I'd always been prepared for it since yeah. I was a nine year old little girl. And um, the character just grew and the writers gave me opportunities, more and more opportunities to write. And when the opportunity came, I was constantly prepared. And so I guess that's how the character grew into what people loved and, and hated, but loved <laughs> at the same time, which is quite confusing. But it is quite a meaty role to Absolutely. take on. I mean, tell us a bit about your character because she was a... She was, <laughs> but uh, you know, a, a friend of mine, a very dear friend of mine, who's also an actress, Bullet Galichana, always said to me that as actors, our job is to love our characters unconditionally. Yeah. It's the audience's job to decide how they feel about her. Mm. So if they think that she is villainous, she's evil, and nothing that she does is good, that's their job. Yeah. Your job is to pour so much love into this character that every action that is, she does is motivated by love. Yeah. So everything that she did, be it murdering people on her wedding day, stealing <laughs> money. I mean, as bride does. As bride does <laughs> on her wedding day in a beautiful dress and high heels. Um, everything that she did for me it was always from coming from a place of love. I never found, like, I never, certainly in my head, I never went, oh, I'm playing this evil character, therefore. Because every person... Every human being, I mean, as actors, we look at our, our characters just as, as sort of we dissecting hu human nature. And every human is motivated by love. Certainly yeah. that's what I believe. And so some actions are, are motivated by a lack of love. Some actions are motivated by um, an, an, a flood of love. And so um, that was the decision that I made every time that I play that character and the things that she did. It always came from, from that space. And you really did play that character with so much conviction yeah. that it was almost like, I think a lot of people didn't know how to separate the two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like the, re the real you and your character. Yeah. But you did such a great job. You were nominated for a SAFTA twice. I was. And then eventually you won. I mean, yeah. congratulations. Thank so you deserving. so much. Thank you. But I mean, that is quite a thing that people don't know the difference. Yeah. And I mean, you struggled with that quite a bit. I did. Um, and, you know, I must say, I'm, I'm very grateful to actresses like, you know, Sherelle Burtis and um, Michelle Burtis, rather, I'm calling her Sherelle. Listen, I'm but also struggling Sherelle. from the same <laughs> Whenever thing. I see her, I see she's Sherelle. Sh exactly. <laughs> Michelle Burtis and Pamela Nambete, who played these villainous women before. Yeah. So South African audiences kind of got used to being able to understand that, oh, this is a character, this is the person. But they had to take a lot of claps. I mean, I know Pamela talks about it often, where people used to slap her at malls because they used Bonnie to... And Bully is being slapped by somebody yeah, because they didn't like her character. Bonnie is the <laughs> sweetest human being. How do you slap Bon Bon? Like, you've got to be on something to slap Bonnie. <laughs> no, exactly. Um, but a, a lot of people did struggle. I mean, I, I do remember when I initially started, um, I used to get incredible hate on social media. Um, messages that were, were quite mean. Yeah. Um, and, and then as a child, uh, I'd like to think I've grown since then, but as a child, I didn't quite understand where this was coming from. So I internalized a lot of it yeah. and, and took on other people's stuff and made it my own. Oh, but you know what, that, as an empath, I think you tend to do that. And I think a lot of actresses are empaths. Oh, absolutely. We're going to be dissecting this a whole lot more mm -hmm. in a little while. Over to you, Danilo. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait for that conversation. Guys, please head over to our social media accounts. Use the hashtag Afternoon Express. Keep the conversation at home too. We'd love to see all those comments coming through Facebook as well as Twitter. After the break, we're going to have more from our guests in the loft. Plus, I found these little pasta little thingies that look like rice grains. They're called a rosmarino and there's going to be an education in the kitchen after these. Get a taste of the smooth life and you could win big when you buy Tropica. 
Follow the entry details on your Tropica bottle and stand a chance to win daily airtime prizes, a weekly giveaway of an experience with a Tropica Island of Treasure contestant, sunglass hat vouchers, Daniel Klein watches or LG home appliances. You could also win the grand prize of a brand new Kia Sportage. T's and C's apply on tropica.co.za. There's nothing smoother than winning with Tropica. Don't forget to watch Tropica Island of Treasure Seychelles every Monday at 7.30 on SABC3. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, this fabulous Friday afternoon, and we are back on the couch with the gorgeous and talented actress, Masasa. Mm -hmm. Now, as I was listening to your interview before the break, I was looking at you speak thinking, oh, this woman is just magnificent. Just the way you, you are and the way you carry yourself. You are so beautiful Thank and you. so astute. And I was thinking about that one meme of Meryl Streep when she was saying, this is me coming back from an audition in Hong Kong where the directors told me that I didn't get the film because I wasn't beautiful enough. Yeah, yeah. And I was thinking about an article that I had read about you receiving so much flack for your role on Scandal. I did. Because people thought that you weren't beautiful enough. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's such a huge thing with trolling at the moment. How mm. So many people have an opinion where it shouldn't be voiced. Yeah. What was that experience like? What actually even happened? Um, it was when I just started on, on, now the character was becoming more prominent in the show. And um, I guess, you know, my mom always said to me, I, like our hands aren't, our fingers aren't the same size. Each finger are, helps for the hand to work. Yeah. Um, and each finger is just as important, uh, the pinky is just as important as the thumb because yeah. of that. And so I guess a, a lot of people don't understand that our beauty is not the same. You know, yeah. some people's beauty is slap bang in your face and some people's beauty takes a little bit of introspection and within yourself and then you see what that person's perhaps reflecting yeah. to you. And so it took a long time for me, Jeannie, to realize that some people were just throwing stuff that didn't belong to me. Yeah. But then, um, because I had been given this opportunity and I didn't go through the struggles that normal actresses went through. I guess this was my baptism of fire is what I went through with social media, um, with, with people just, I mean, it got to a point where I actually had to deactivate certain platforms because I couldn't take the amount of, yeah. of uh, messages Use. that I was getting. Were yeah. people sending you messages directly or were you searching or like seeing your name and conversations no, about you No, people were sending online. messages directly. Um, and, and what would they say? Um, stuff like this girl doesn't isn't supposed to be on the show. She's not. And I'm I'm such a phenomenal actress. I couldn't understand how you could be obsessed about that <laughs> at the time. Now in hindsight, again, I don't I don't take it on. I mean, I was younger then, and I guess you you learn to develop a thicker skin, and you also learn to appreciate your own beauty. Because I couldn't yeah. I couldn't um, appreciate myself if I could take all of that and internalize it. It was yeah. a lesson for me, a reminder from, from God, from the universe, that perhaps I need to look at myself and, and how I treat myself. Because yeah. once I accept myself and love myself, then I won't be, be so obsessed about no, people but saying I, stuff like that. I totally like get that. it. And we're going to yeah. be like, discussing this with our psychologist a little bit later. But I mean, some, every now and then, if I read something really awful about myself, and when it's something personal, when it's somebody commenting about weight or how you look, I go and I look at the person who's commenting and I think, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but I do take it on, as I'm sure yeah. you did as well. Yeah. But then when you let, but I mean, you did, you did have a dip and you did suffer from depression a little I bit. I did, but I must say that also a large part of the depression that I suffered was losing my father while I was still in varsity. My father had a heart attack and he passed away suddenly. And so I think the loss of that got compounded or, or rather it magnified this, my grief that I carried, on, carried for years, um, magnified these messages. It made them yeah. seem as if, well, if my dad was here, you wouldn't say this sort of nonsense. Um, so yeah, it was a tough time, but I must say that I'm truly grateful for it. I'm, I'm grateful for all experiences. I think yeah. we are, I mean, and I, guess people would, this is debatable depending on what sort of belief system you follow, but I do believe that we are the sum of our experiences and yeah. you can either choose to let that depress you and make you sad and hold on to every other thing that a person said or, 
or you can just take the lesson that you need to learn and move on. And like, yeah. sometimes the lesson happens instantaneously and sometimes the lesson happens years later. Yeah. For me, I wouldn't be the Masasa sitting with the gorgeous genie D on the couch and be feeling Masasa. good <laughs> about myself and knowing that I also deserve to occupy this space had I not gone Absolutely. through that. So Absolutely. I truly am, am grateful for it. I don't, yeah. I don't look at it as something that... Um, you know, I, I should be doing that to other people as well because, Never. you know, an eye for an eye makes us all blind. And yeah. the reason why adages like that come to being is because there is truth to that. So if we all keep on being mean, yeah. then... But what has given you that strength? Because, I mean, it's, it's easy for me to say, yes, but I am some of my experiences. And, mm. But for me to be able to get there, you need to acquire a lot of tools to be able to say that. True. So what was your support? My support was definitely my mother. And my support was also choosing to, to live the way that I do yeah. now, just as I could choose to, to take those messages and absorb them and make them a part of my daily armor and wear it on my, oh, I could choose to go, okay, that's fine. That's what you think. Yeah. Does it change the fact that you watch, you tune in every night to watch the yeah. show? No, it doesn't, because you're still going to tune in yeah. tomorrow and you're still going to say the same things that you're going to say. But are you lifting the ratings? Absolutely. So I'm <laughs> doing my part. Damn straight. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think, I mean, I know, like, and it's a challenge that all humans face, Jeannie. We all, it's, we all read the self-help books. We all, you know, listen to mm. the tapes. We all can quote um, Wayne Dyer, all of that. But I think every day you choose to show up for your yeah. life. And I guess that experience for me was, you know, Bangeni, how are you going to show up to life? Are you going to show up apologetic? Are yeah. you going to show up sad? Are you going to show up going, oh, well, people think I'm ugly. Uh, no, I'm, I'm showing up yeah. and, and it's paying off. You know, exactly. I'm doing, I'm playing the parts that I want to play. I'm yeah. doing the work that I want to uh, do. People are getting moved. People are giving me their time. You know, when people watch your show, they're giving you time out of their lives yeah. that they'll never get back. That's an honor. And you deserve every little bit of success, Thank you. success that comes comes your way. Thank you. Just quickly, because I've got a wrap now. Gerard Butler. He's so hot. <laughs> He's a work of art. <laughs> he carried you. He did. I was doing Machine Gun Preacher in my second year of varsity, and I got a tiny little part in Machine uh, Gun Preacher, and he had to carry... Oh, he's so beautiful. He had to carry, he had to carry my character and, and exchange a little bit of dialogue. How and did I, you not just take his face and lick it? I struggled. <laughs> I did. I, the entire time I said, don't do it, Bangin. It's just like, just a little lick. He won't remember, but uh, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Thank goodness. I'm obsessed with you. I think I'm keeping you forever. Thank you so much for chatting to us. Thank you. You're staying on the couch. Me. We're going to be back in a little while. Well, I don't know about licking famous actors' faces, but perhaps the delicious minestrone will do it for you, and that's what we're making in the loft today. To get all the details on your mobile device, SMS the keyword SOUP to 33650. It'll cost you 150, and your free SMSs don't apply. All the details will come to your mobile device, and you can make this at home for this coming weekend. Uh, Tani Malinga is the product developer from Woolies, who's helping us make this delicious yes. recipe. And uh, last week, we celebrated our birthday on Afternoon Express. Oh, and congratulations. Thank you. And our <laughs> people's favorite last one of the favorite guests was uh, Dr. Malinga. Okay. So I want to check seeing as you Malinga He's oh, Malinga. Can you do the cake? No, I just get above the asked table. this every single time. Absolutely not. I Why? Cannot, I cannot do the just cake. Just try it above the table. So how about, I was about to say, you show me, then I'll I can, try. Okay, I can, should I? Yeah, now you can try. <laughs> okay, how's that? Oh, no, shame. <laughs> Shame. Let's stick to what you're good at, which is cooking. Let's make a minestrone and afternoon express. Now name them after me. You get linguine. You get um, penne. penne. You get spaghetti. Fafaloni. Fafalo never heard of that one. Yeah, That's it's a new the, one almost like the butterfly ship. Okay, cool. But the one pasta I've never heard of in my life before, besides this one now, is this one that we got in love today. Rosmarino, which is one of the ones I've seen in the Woolies wraps that you guys make. Yeah. Um, but I've never actually Those worked with it before. wraps are amazing. Yeah, tell us about it. Sorry, side like this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so basically rosmarinos are, it's referred to almost as a rice pasta. And it's great in soups, it's great in salads, and today we're going to use it in our minestrone soup. Lovely, I yeah. cannot wait. Let's get started. My hands are ready to get dirty. Okay, so first I think you should pass me onions, carrots, uh -huh. and the garlic. Okay, there's carrots, onions, and garlic, and then what can I do in the meantime? Okay, in the meantime you can chop the celery and then you can shred the kale. If you don't like to use kale, you can substitute that with spinach. Okay, great. But kale it is for now. I love how you said chop the celery. My celery has already been chopped. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't help you with that, can I now? <laughs> okay, so this is a basic sofrito that we're making. Okay. Or a meripois. A meripois. Yeah. If you want to sound fancy at home, you just call it the base of your soup. A sofrito. <laughs> a sofrito, okay, yeah. cool. Okay, so we're going to let this brown. Cool, I'll move on to the kale. I'm not very good at cutting these kinds of ingredients, to be honest. No, this is perfect, don't worry. I don't know how to cut kale. Okay, so let's clear this. So how finely chopped do you want these, like this? Just nice big pieces. Okay. 
kale is trending from a, he a health perspective. Mm -hmm. um, but the great thing about this soup is that you can also use your own ingredients. So you can add in mushrooms, whatever veggies that you want to add. Lovely. So yeah. just kind of whatever the things that you don't usually eat, just kind of throw them into a mini store and make it full of flavor. Exactly. And then later on, we'll be adding in this rosmarino, which we're yes. going to have to get to know a bit about. Is this enough spinach that on kale? That is a little bit more. A little bit more for yeah. you. Cool. So we're going to put our celery in. Cool. Oh, yum. Get the celery I found for you. Thank you. And then we're just going to let this simmer on very, very low heat. Okay. So let's, in the meantime, while that's busy simmering off, let's tell us more about this range at Weeds, because I've seen the packaging is different. Everything basically about it is different. And, you know, these little guys that we've seen over here, yeah. they almost look a lot more rustic than the usual penne which, yeah. which you can buy. So basically, um, in this range of pasta, um, the pasta is extruded through a bronze die cutter. So what that means is the pasta goes through this die cutter, and that just roughens up the surface of your pasta. Ah. Um, and that allows for your sauce to stick lovely on your pasta. One beautiful way of and, phrasing yeah, it is it, it sticks to the sauce like you, well, you cling, it clings to the sauce like you cling to your lover. Well, I don't know about that, but it definitely does cling to the sauce, to the oh. pasta. <laughs> Trust me, make this and you'll cling to your lover, your lover will cling to you. This is a deal, it's done and dusted. But it's a, it's a particularly good family recipe, if I'm not mistaken. I was reading on the back of one of these ingredients here, yeah. and the family's name, I was trying to find it for you. Atilio. Atilio. Okay, you say it. No, you say it. You, you say I dare it. You, you say it, it first. <laughs> it's Atilio uh, Mastra Mauro. Yes. So I think that's good enough. Yeah. But basically they use this pasta um, recipe has been passed down generation from family to family and now we have it at Woolworths. Lovely. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you guys are getting a real nice sense of the home cooking. It's very that, authentic. Yes, love yeah. it. Go yeah. for these handmade recipes because they've been tested and they've been tried. These families have been using them for generations on generations and it honestly is really, really, really delicious. Yeah. And I'm so glad they've got it in this uh, rosmarino which I haven't tried before. You've right, got what's the accent on good. Okay, um, now we have to add... What about some stock? Yeah. Is this over here? No. Let's use this one, that's open. Is this the open one? Yeah. There we go. So stock. Whoops. It's not open, this one. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So we're going to pour in our stock and, oh my word, this is going to take forever. <laughs> <laughs> so stock squeeze it out. and your tomatoes. Okay, tomatoes on this side. These are also Italian tomatoes. You put those in the meantime, I'll cut this whole bigger for you. So it oh, comes out thank you. There we go. That's much easier. I'll do this for you. Stuck Italian, stack, stuck oh. Italian tomatoes, um, salt and pepper, and our Italian seasoning. Great. I'm not too sure. I'm going to open it this side because that's probably better for me. There we go. And they've got this new little way of the tearing thing, which makes yeah, it so simple. Yeah, so much easier. Yeah, I'm trying to make it complicated with a knife, and you can just <laughs> open it very simply. There we go. I'll pour that in for you. Thank you. Yummy. And what stock are you using? Yeah, I see liquid chicken stock. Yes. If you also don't want to use chicken stock, you can use beef stock. No worries. Okay. Right, so that's going to go into the sim, if I'm not mistaken, and then later on we'll be showing you how to incorporate all the rest of these ingredients. You want to see how we use the rosmarino, all of that will be coming up next and after the ad break on Afternoon Express, plus more from our guests as we discuss how to remain sane in an insane industry. Join the conversation on social media, and we'll see you after this. Make Afternoon Express your destination for recipe inspiration. Find the ingredients and instructions to making these delicious meals, sides and desserts on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, as fans of television series or films, it can be hard to separate an actor from their character. Now, this can't be more true than in the case of our guest today, Masasa Mbangeni, who has been called horrible names by people in the public, who have a hard time understanding that she only plays a character. Mm. So we're back on the couch with Masasa, and we're also joined now by psychologist Teresa Bloomberg to discuss how to remain sane in an insane industry like ours. Well, that was quite... I mean, that sentence in itself is a great way to start this interview because... How to stay sane in an insane industry? Who said we sane? Yeah. <laughs> How to become sane in, yeah, as insane people in but an insane I, industry. Yeah, I remember when I first started off in the industry in radio and somebody had passed a comment and I quite sensitively like, looked back and I didn't appreciate the comment. And it was Cleone Cassidy who looked back and said, if you're going to survive in this industry, you need a, t uh, you need a tougher skin. Mm. And you need to thicken up. But why do we have to do that? <laughs> it's quite a... It's, Sorry, you're going to say something. No, no, no. <laughs> Firstly, it's a moment to be sitting next to these famous people. Yeah, <laughs> I have to tell you. Um, insane people, you mean? Yeah, no, yeah all these insane people. Me. You know what, Jenny? It, 
the, the more famous and the more you are celebrated and the more that you're out there, the more they're going to be those negative, hateful people. Yeah. And I, I think it's just part of what you all have to accept. But here's the thing. If we had to get into the mind of the people who are saying these nasty things, I mean, please low self-esteem they have to get oh, there's a I reason am. behind somebody who's sitting behind their keyboard or their phone yeah. with the intention to hurt to somebody harm, else yes. exactly that's th there's something wrong with them exactly and to do it anonymously as well yeah. Yeah. and if we look into the psychology happy people don't do that happy contented people don't put other people down but mm. let's look at what you, this, this phrase insane industry because i think it's something you particularly focus around people who are in the public eye because obviously they're open to all those kinds of judgments but with social media everyone's technically in the public eye as they are and everyone's exactly. looking to try and find things to you know bring you down for yes. but what defines an insane industry is it just because somebody is under more critical eye than others that's a loaded question <laughs> what, what is an insane it, i think because we're out there because we're putting ourselves out there because we're doing our work in front of hundreds and thousands and millions of people but you know again i want to say I think that everyone's doing an amazing job. Yeah. Let's look at those who are so spiteful and so horrid and have to throw the word in because you know how I feel about integrity. With no integrity that they want to do that, yeah. why are we even wasting time talking about it? Why are we even giving the power to them to mm. discuss? Well, because we've, we've got low self-esteem. I think as yeah. everyone does, anyone has yeah. a self-esteem issue. Isn't it hard mm -hmm. to know that, like, if I don't know myself, I'm going to allow anyone else to define me? Yes. And you, Daniela, you said exactly the thing. It's all got to do with the self-esteem. We have to create, and we've you've learned that, That's such amazing. an amazing self-esteem, confidence, that it doesn't affect us, but that yeah. takes a lot but, of work. And mm -hmm. that's very difficult to do. Like, if we, if we consider so. Masasa's case, yes. why is it that, I think, with you, you can read hundreds of comments that are also complimentary, yes. and everybody yes. thinks yeah. you're beautiful and that you are a dynamic and you're a brilliant actress. You read one yes. Yes. saying that you're shatters not good you. enough and you're not mm. beautiful yes, and it exactly. shatters you. Why mm. does that happen? I mean, is that what happened with you? Absolutely, but um, again, I think it goes back to the self-esteem. It's called self-esteem because it starts with the self. Yeah. And at that time, when I look back in my life, at that time I was, I mean, as an actor, you're constantly insecure. You're constantly mm. wondering, did I say that mm. line right? Did I turn the right way? Did I do this? Did I do that? So mm. it becomes almost second nature to constantly be insecure and and it was because I was in that space in my life that all I could see was out of the 10,000 other comments that were saying well done great episode well done you did this oh I watched your theater show you were brilliant I'd see that one that goes yeah but your eyes mm. are funny and I'm like oh shit but my eyes why wasn't I wearing my glasses mm. so it's just it's human nature and it's yeah. something that I guess it, it goes back to that choice of, of having to yeah. to choose yeah. what you're going to take in and what you're going to ignore but I think we put ourselves in such um, such you know positions where we're really almost like walking dartboards but not always with negative stuff I mean I always or, or, or not always but I also get a lot of positive stuff that's also inc incredibly inappropriate where people mm. tr you know cross the line with mm. I love you and this and that and, and mm. it's also quite Mm. With kisses violating. at the end yeah. and sending you love. But I think no, yeah. but it's violating. Mm. And with all of these conversations, it is about coming to know yourself and being centred in yourself. I think that applies across the board, regardless whether you're in the media or not. Yeah. Getting to know who you are, getting to real centred space is a really important skill set to learn because if you know that to its core, the yeah. rest of the stuff becomes external noise that you can kind of take and, and let go of quite easily. So yeah. how do we go about understanding ourselves and loving ourselves deeply enough to not have that affect us so much? I've got a lovely word for that, that, that a train, image from the inside out. Yeah. That we can sit, no matter, and it came from all these beautiful makeovers, they look stunning, they do the hair, they do your makeup, you put in clothes, and you're still sitting with the negative thoughts, oh, my stomach's sticking out, oh, my nose is, big. oh, I still feel. So we've got to start looking at the conversations that we're having in our head, the negative thoughts, and start changing that. And we've got to feel good from the inside and affirm ourselves from the inside. That's hard to do. It, that is so hard. It's such hard work. It's taking that one negative conversation and think, you are nothing in my life. Look what I have achieved. And then backlashing at them and then going out there and say, look, I'm famous. Show yourself having fun. It's the worst thing you can do. Show yourself. Being but it's, it's hard work yeah. because you've got to listen to the conversations that are going on in our head. That sounds insane. No, hey? but a friend of mine actually said, you've got to change your inner dialogue. Yeah. So That's I remember exactly always it. saying, like, like, if somebody would say, oh, you're looking so good, I'd go, oh, no, I'm looking fat or whatever. Right, yeah. yes. And a friend of mine said, stop saying that. Yes. Change your inner dialogue. Your conversation with yourself yes. must be, actually, I'm having a skinny day today and I'm feeling quite <laughs> hot today. Yes. And actually... That's 
Exactly. Well, what do you think it. will manifest? Yes. That is yeah. exactly it. If someone pays us a compliment, we go, yeah. no, it's a bad hair day. Oh, no, but I haven't yeah. exercised. Yeah. yeah, we do that. We don't claim it. We don't mm. own it, as yeah. women specifically. Now, I find it so interesting that we're having this conversation with you, my sister, because I find you the most, like, radiant, yes, um, positive oh, person when you speak. I'm you just, girl crushing yeah. so hard on you. you just, <laughs> when you walk into a room, there's just this presence, and your voice is, is yes. just what it is. How do you cope with all of these things? How do you sent yourself and like who is the true masasa who you to wake up in the morning and say this is who i am and this is who i'm going to be today i'm not going to allow that to affect me you know i think that is a part of living as a human is discovering that so i can't give you an absolute answer and go this is who i am because who i am tomorrow might be different to who i'm going to be today yeah. i think what's been a positive change for me and and just touching on what you were saying about sometimes people stepping over the line mm -hmm. part of that self-esteem and and, and 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 owning and getting to know myself is also knowing boundaries and mm. knowing to have an absolute yes and an absolute absolute no and feeling like a two-year-old when when no sits so you know how two-year-olds are like my nephew's two and every his best word now is no and no. you're like I love you no um come here no but the truth and the confidence that sits with those no's even those uncomfortable comments you're just like no nah, that's unacceptable yeah. and not having to explain to you why that's unacceptable yeah. because I'm so clear in who I am and and that doesn't sit well with who I am and I'm going to have to let you know so that you don't go around thinking that that's okay yeah. so I think it, it's in part of of growing in self-esteem is being able to sit with a beautiful yes and sitting with a beautiful no to answer your question I, I'm loving discovering myself at the moment and um, it's taken a very long time. I think part of the, the insaneness of our industry is that our work, we tell people to tune in and watch me pretend to be someone else. Yeah. And you spend 12 hours sitting pretending to be someone else that sometimes you get off that set and you go, Oh, what does Masasa like? Because I know what this one likes, but yeah. I don't. Does Masasa want chocolate right now, or am I, do I need chocolate cake because I just had to pretend to be dragging a dead body across mm. in the, <laughs> uh, the floor? Um, and so, just discovering stuff like yeah. that has been so exciting for me. Um, discovering what I like, discovering what I don't like, learning to say no, learning to say thank you if someone gives me a compliment, as opposed to going, Ah, oh, nah, you sure you meant that for me? Has been a wonderful discovery. So. Who I am is a discovery every single day. Wow, is that? Oh, you're wonderful. What a great answer. What? Thank you so much. Thank and thank you, you so thank much. You. Thank oh, you. Man. What a great conversation. It I could have been. this chat all day. I know, but the show must go on after the break. We put the finishing touches on our minestrone soup. Plus, it's time to put Masasa's tech knowledge to the test in our weekly <laughs> web whiz quiz. Don't go anyway. See always. New look, same great taste. A warm welcome back to the Afternoon Express Loft Kitchen. Today you're making a delicious manis, minas minestrone uh, with Tane Mal Tane Malinga. You scared me to death. Can I let me try it? Above my head. Come on, go about like I'm gonna Okay, get... I'm gonna do it right. You scared me Come to death. Okay. No, that's not too bad. Well done, everyone. We can give a round of applause at home. We definitely can. So we're making a delicious minestrone in the loft today, and we're using this delicious new pasta, which I've never heard of before. It's a rosemarino. Yes. And uh, this has been simmering around for the beginning part of the show, and I think we're almost ready to start adding all these other flavors. Yeah, this should have reduced beautifully now. So what we're going to do now, mm. I think you can add in the rosemarino. That is so delicious. Wow. Cool. The next step is to add this pasta in, which is made by a family... Family an recipe. Italian, yeah, an Italian family. I think half the package should be okay. A little Is bit more. That there be we enough? go. Yeah. Cool. And if you want to add in more stock, feel welcome to. But I think this should be okay. Okay, delicious. Then we're gonna put in some of our kale. Again, if you do not like kale, this is a superfood, by the way, so mm. you should like it. Cool. Some of put your all the kale. iron in it. Yeah. Um, if you don't like it, then you can add in some spinach. Yummy. And True. so basically now all of that liquid in there needs to be absorbed by that rosmarino. Yeah, that, that so pasta. the rosmarino is going to swell up beautifully. It's going to be about twice its size because it's just absorbing mm. all of that flavor. Does it crumble easily or is it one of those ones you can just keep stirring in? No, it doesn't crumble. I think just like any pasta, you want it to be al dente, so like firm to the bite. Yum. Um, so no, no crumbling. So okay, now cool. we're going to put in our seasoning. So this is salt and pepper. Oh, yummy. And Italian seasoning. Yummy. Which is all the mixed herbs. It's got yes. a bit of basil in there, I'm sure a bit of rosemary. Italians don't like coriander, by the way, so I hear. It's a fact. <laughs> it's a fact. I'm not alone. And, and then we're going to add in cannellini beans. If you don't like these beans, substitute that again with whatever you like. Okay, but um, there must be a nice meaty bean. You want those beans that have got that real texture I to would them. use white kidney beans. White kidney beans absorb any flavor. Well, absorb the, the, the taste of the meal that you put it in. What's so white called? kidney beans are quite a good substitute. Okay, and then we're just going to give us a good stir. 
All right. Well, obviously, for the purposes of TV, that's going to have to simmer down and reduce quite a lot. Yeah. We've got uh, one prepped, don't we? Yes, we so do. I'm do this for you. Move that there. See what a gentleman I am, right? Chivalry is not dead. <laughs> I'm going to put this one over here. Okay. And voila! Okay, and then to garnish this beautifully, there is some bread and some butter. Yummy. So we discussed that this was a perfect family meal, so I want to invite the girls over to come and taste this. Um, okay, Masasa and Jeannie, come on over here. I want to try and see if we can... Do you guys are big Minestrone fans? Yes. Yeah, I am. This is there my favourite thing ever and I'm I'll starving. This you. couldn't have come at a better time. Up beautifully. Oh, yummy. Oh, that looks gorgeous. So and this is not one of those things where no, you're allowed to taste on this television show, hey? We're okay. one of those shows. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And I'm that actress that eats. Trust okay, good. Me. You know, I, I always... Love food. I tell, I tell you this, Tani. The what? first time I ever ended up on Afternoon Express, the first tip Jeannie ever gave me as, as obviously presenting the show, she's like, yes. Dan, you really need to learn to do TV bites because... Thank no, he was eating do. like a full mouthful of yeah. I was like, no, Danilo, So how do you bites. do a TV bite so I don't so embarrass my mouth? No, okay. just shove it in and we'll do it together. Is this is a TV bite. <laughs> so this is a regular bite. Okay, that's yes. me. Okay. Yeah. This is a TV bite. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, okay. And look at the face. <laughs> <laughs> this is okay. how I regularly eat at home. I have not got that art down at all. Here we go. Wow, that is amazing. Is mm. Delicious. So basically, the keyword for this one is soup. Your SMS is to 33650. It'll cost you 1 Rand 50. Those free SMSs Ooh. don't apply. You get all the details on how to make our delicious minestrone using this rosmarino pasta for the first time ever. Here's a quick recap on how it's all done. Mm. Mm. Well, that's for dinner on Afternoon Express today. And because it's the weekend, it's time for us to get into our Web Whiz Quiz. <laughs> All right, and our contestants today, Jeannie D and Masasa. How are you guys feeling? How well do you know the internet, Masas? I, I don't. At this all. is going to be exciting. Do you use it? I try to. All right, we'll find out what your social media is. I have to tell you a story. Mm. Yesterday I was talking to my goddaughter who's four years old and she was scratching. So I said, have you got allergies? So she said, yes. So I said, what are you allergic to? So she said, either milk or the iPad. So I said, what part of the iPad are you allergic to? She said, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. That's so cute. awesome. <laughs> All right, we're going to have lots of fun on the show today. The rules are very simple. There's six internet based questions with multiple choice answers. First person to get the uh, correct answer needs to hit the buzzer and share their answer. And after you give the answer, our resident uh, open serve technician and internet expert will provide us with the correct answer. So let's meet her. Good afternoon. I'm Pretty Kumalo. I'm your resident open serve technician. We all use the internet every day, but how much do we really know about it? Let's find out, and good luck. Good luck to the both of you. Okay. Let's get into our first question for today. You at home can play with us as we'll try and see how quickly you and your families can answer these questions. Question number one is, what do these three things have in common? Fiber technology, satellite technology, and cellular technology. Your options, Jeannie, before you answer, are A, they are all wireless technologies, B, they are all South African inventions, C, they are all telecommunication technologies, or D, they are all used, or well, they all are used exclusively in the medical field. Which one is correct? A, they're all wireless technologies. Jeannie's going for the answer of A. Masasa, are you agreeing or I disagreeing? I would totally agree with A. A. Then you've got to be faster than me on the Sorry, buzzer. I'm it's winning that point. Pressure! <laughs> well, either way, the answer is not A. It is, in fact, C. They are all telecommunication technologies. Let's find out more. They are all telecommunication technologies. These are technologies that are used for different purposes depending on the requirements. Our technicians at OpenServe have the depth of skill and expertise to work in these areas. 
as well as other ICT related fields. Da, 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 da. But surely it's all wireless. <laughs> well, kind of, I guess so. Uh, but we've got, that's a great start to the competition, by the way. Let's get to question two. It is on the screen and it is, what does FITH stand for? What, or FTTH, I always said FITH. What does FTTH stand for? Is it A, fast time to home? B, fiber to the home? C, fiber to the hospital? Or D, fast track to help? Uh, so this, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, B? My sauce is going with B, fibre to the home. The correct answer is in fact B, yeah! yeah wait, it's what is it? fibre to the home. Well done, my sauce. That was a good, good guess. Let's go find a out more from guess. our technician. Sure. FTTH stands for fibre to the home. This acronym refers to the installation and then use of fibre optic cables from the central point directly to an individual building such as a home or business park. <laughs> so it's one point Masasa, nil to Genie. And that first question kind of I should take a point away from you, but I won't. I won't. <laughs> you're just, a nice person. I'm a nice person <laughs> yes. and you're a guest in the loft Absolutely. today. Absolutely. Let's get into question number three. It's on your screen. It is, which one of these does not belong in the group? Is it A, 3G, B, 2G, C, LTE, or D, FTTH? That's obvious. Oh, who tapped we, it first? Both of us have been Who tapped that sand. first? We both <laughs> tapped that, it's <laughs> awkward. Okay, let's, I'll give you guys 50 percent of the vote then. What are you both going to say? Reveal your answer in three, two, one. D. D. Oh, Jeannie's taking on D. That is indeed the correct answer. Yeah! D, FTTH does not fit. Let's find out more. We are useless at competing. The odd one out is FTTH, while others have mobile connectivity options. FTTH, or fiber to the home, is fixed broadband option. <laughs> right, let's get into our fourth question. It's on your screen, and the question is... Which statement is false? Is it A, only 2% of South Africans have access to the internet? B, Google is the number one most popular website in the world, followed by Facebook and YouTube. C, there are over 966 million websites in the world today. Or D, Bermuda has the highest internet penetration rate at 97.75%. A is false because all those others I'm pretty sure are true. 100% true. Jeannie's saying A. Masasa, are you agreeing with her? I'm saying D. I'm taking a point away from you. The answer Jeannie? is A. No. It is correct. Can Only 2% of South Africans have access to the internet. Bermuda is one of the most expensive places in the world to live. Oh, wow. Well, cray cray. Yeah. Okay. Want to know more? Check it out from mm. my expert. <laughs> the false statement is definitely A. According to research from May 2016, 51% of South Africans have daily access to the internet. With the rollout of broadband prioritized, this number is constantly on the increase. It's no wonder Bermuda is the fastest internet rate. It's like all that black hole that's there, so kind of stealing all the internet. Yeah, that's it's one happening. of the most expensive places in the world to live. That's crazy. Sure. Amazing. Question number five is on your screen. What is this measuring? All right, it's there. What is <laughs> My it measuring? My current My speed. <laughs> <laughs> is it A, speed on a highway? B, internet download speed? C, speed of a remote control car? D, speed of a 747? I mean... I'm never driving that. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Come on, girls. Okay, Don't wait. Do the that, options are there. Because now we're under pressure. Oh. You both said it again. <laughs> Reveal your answers in three, two, one. B. B. Cool. B it is. 100% oh, correct. Yes. Internet download speed. B. Our experts got more. <laughs> <laughs> the speed of the line is measured in megabits per second. This image shows the testing of a line in certain areas. Regular tests are done to compare networks. When we started providing broadband services, that is many years ago, before I was even born. The highest speed possible in SA were well below one megabits per second. Today, we will be pleased to know that OpenServe makes it possible to consumers to access speed up to 100 megabits per second in some areas. All right, to be honest, I'm not keeping up with your scores, but if I think about it correctly, it's winner takes all for this one, so it's a tie, all right? I'm gonna give this last point just to kind of clear the air. Question number six uh, is on your screen. It is, how much time does the average South African spend on the internet a day? 24 hours. Is it A, 14 <laughs> minutes, B, 4 hours, C, 5 hours, or D, 6 hours? Sure, that's close, eh? I wouldn't even know. No, I spend way more than that. I can't even know. Exactly. Answer that. More than 6 hours I'm, a day? I'm, on the, I'm online more okay, than 6 hours a day. Okay, must I take a guess for winner takes all? D. Dini, Dini, do you want to take a guess? Dini, it's the D. Dini, it's the D. <laughs> Which one do you want to take? It's D. Yeah, I'll go for 
That answer is incorrect okay. from both of you. What? In fact, I'm gonna let you take one more guess because it is winner's take or one of you has to win. B, B, B. Jeannie's oh. already said it. B is correct. Four yeah, hours a day yeah. is what the average South African wears. Okay, Congratulations, Okay, but I spent 24 hours a day <laughs> online. <laughs> Let's go find more from our expert. Although some of us spend more time than we like to admit, recent statistics show that the average South African spent approximately four hours on the internet. Do you think that is a lot? Yeah. Clearly nice. these two don't think it's a lot <laughs> at all. Congratulations, Jeannie. One round of applause, our Yay. winner and our web whiz quiz. You're officially a whiz on the internet, all right? Thank you. After the break, more games in the Afternoon Express Loft. Not like this, however. We get to answer your questions live on the show. It is Ask the Presenters after these. OpenServe, South Africa's largest telecoms infrastructure provider. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. It is the weekend and we're so excited to be celebrating with you today. And it's our favorite time of the show. It's a chance for us to really engage with you in some intimate ways. So if you ever see a camera <laughs> roaming around your malls. Not that kind of show. Yeah. <laughs> if you see a camera roaming around the malls or finding you in the street and asking, us, asking you guys to ask us questions, think of some really deep questions you'd like to ask uh, all the presenters on Afternoon Express and we'll be answering them on the show today. So I thought today we'd start with a question for Jeannie. Let's do it. If I would ask um, Jeannie, um, who would you trade a life with, um, I would wonder who would it be. Who would you trade your life with? I would not trade my life with anybody. Are you yeah, insane? Yeah. <laughs> no, I wouldn't trade my life with anyone. Okay, let's, and let's, nobody ever should think that they yeah. would want to do anything like okay, let's that. Let's rephrase the question. If it was for just a day, just like to do someone else's life for no, a day. No, my life is so mad. Every day of my life is completely different. Oh. If only we could all be GDD, right? <laughs> if I were to trade my life for somebody for a day, it would probably be somebody like in a, in a, in a completely different space. So I'm like a president. I want to know what it's like to be a president because everyone gla glamorizes it. I just want to do the fun <laughs> stuff. I want to go streaking naked through the White House. I want to do all of those fun things. I'm pretty things. sure Trump does that. <laughs> Jeez. I just want to ask Danilo, I did a hectic 99, so I want to ask him, doesn't he miss the hectic 99 days? I mean, it is a fun show, so I want to know about him, doesn't he miss it maybe? Because I'd like to go there again. Interesting question. I get that asked quite a lot on social media. Do I miss my hectic 99 days? And there is a deep part of me that's always going to miss like good parts of your life, parts that you really enjoyed. I don't regret leaving though, like that I don't, because I didn't have to grow up. Imagine if I was this 40 year old man, good afternoon, welcome to hectic. I had to move on and I had to grow up a little bit at some point in my life. Um, but I, I, I do miss the, the sort of like liveliness of it all. But I, I think I've just grown up a bit since then. So yeah, I don't know if I miss it. I don't regret it though. Do you ever have shows that you like regret like leaving or missing? I've only or? ever been on Top of League and Afternoon Express. <laughs> <laughs> My life was on but Top of League. Top Travel, like now that you're not shooting oh, I miss again. Top, I miss Top Travel. I would go and do it tomorrow. Yeah, so I think I'd that's the thing. Flight tomorrow. Yeah, of course. Everything that we do is lots and lots of fun as we go through the process and we love each project. Of course, little parts you want to carry on. It's like old relationships. Like there's going to be parts that you really love and miss, but you know it was the right thing to leave at that time. Absolutely. What a good analogy. Next question. <laughs> if I were there to ask Jeannie something, I would like to know, if she decides to go to the Bahamas one day on her own boat and the boat didn't work and she got lost at sea, what would she do in such a situation? Well, firstly, if it was my own boat, I would have a really hot skipper <laughs> and I would expect him to swim me across to the island <laughs> on his back. <laughs> <laughs> that deserves the biggest round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Well thought out. On your way to the Bahamas, I really want to go. Let's uh, like kind of get through one more question. I think we can squeeze one more in. Let's take a look. If I would ask Daniel one question, I would ask him like, yo, bruh, what's the key to everything, bruh? Because he got like an amazing job, bruh. Like, well, how would you help a brother out to get that job? Like, for <laughs> real, dog. Yeah. Yo, brother, just call me up. Yeah, man, yeah. You just call me, you call me, we make something happen. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? No, no. I don't know. What's the key to everything and what's like, how do you kind of do the space? It's a lot of hard work. I think a lot of people watch us in the industry and they always think that, you know, we're just like glamorous people who got there just by chance. Uh, a lot of the career things happen at right time, right place, but it's a, it is a lot of hard work. And we don't sit here and arrive at like four o'clock and be like, ta-da, live show. Um, so I think it's... He's lying. I totally do that. Yeah, she does. She's, <laughs> she's got to that point. I still do lots of prep and hard work and lots of, lots of work behind the scenes. I mean, you're only getting to see parts of my life on TV, on the radio, or on social media, but there's a lot of other stuff that happens behind all of those different scenes. So I guess lots and lots of hard work, but Harlan, man, Harlan on social. Uh, we'll always see, I'm big on, on like sort of mentorship and trying to see what we can do. You've got to have the talent though. 
Exactly. Yeah, well, that wraps up the segment. Ask the presenters on Afternoon Express today. And that wraps up our week. It wraps up Afternoon Express for today. Next week's going to be another epic week. What have you got planned for the weekend? I haven't made any plans yet. Oh, me neither. I really like to be just as surprised as anyone else is watching right. what happens in my life. So all your friends and family that are watching, surprise her with something absolutely awesome. We hope you have an incredible weekend this weekend. Thanks for tuning into the show this week. We'll be back same time, same place on Monday, 4 to 5, SABC3. Good night and happy eating. Bye. Another feel-good production.